Hello everyone, welcome back. I've got another uh, fun art project today that is actually gonna be based on how our world looks right now as we're being homeschooled in our homes. What it brought to mind was this painting by Raphael called The School of Athens. And I wanna to read to you right now some of the descriptions about this painting. Who are all these men standing in the vast hall? They're actually Greek philosophers and artists. This painting has become known as the School of Athens. But what kind of school could this be? Where are the desks? Where is the teacher? What is everyone chattering about? Can you imagine the noise? Does this remind you of your classroom? There's a man lounging on the steps reading a piece of paper. Another is writing something down as he leans against the wall. A third man looks totally bored and is doodling without looking at what he is doing. Somebody else is peering round another man's shoulder and copying what he's writing down. These men are not paying attention because they are all in fact teachers rather than students. They are some of the greatest thinkers, mathematicians, scientists, geographers, artists, and inventors of all time and although they lived hundreds of years ago, their teachings are still used in schools today. Raphael, the artist who made this painting during the Renaissance, must have thought he was pretty special because he actually included himself among those great teachers. This is actually not a painting, but a fresco, which is a painting that is painted directly on the wall. So I hope you found the School of Athens very fascinating. It's one of my favorite paintings for a lot of reasons. One, because of the realistic style of Renaissance art, but because they combine so many people who were talking and interacting with each other. It's just a very vibrant piece of art to me. But we're gonna steer a little bit away from that and we are gonna make our own piece of paper, a drawing using geometric shapes. So we're gonna break it down and simplify it. Instead of trying to draw realistic people, I want you to use geometric shapes that you find around the house. I've got some rectangle cardboard. Found some square, triangle, and hexagon toys. An old circle from a tape roll that I used to hang up your art at school. And I want you to set up your piece of paper to arrange it in a way that might look like how you are learning at home. So homeschooling in my house has actually centered around this table. So I'm gonna start by using my large rectangle and I'm gonna trace it in the middle of the paper. Now remember our geometric shapes are our shapes that have to follow the rules and the rectangle is different than a square because it has two sides short and two sides long. Remember this and you won't be wrong. Now, what happens though on this table is usually we're sitting around it. I've got one child sitting in one spot. Let me use the triangle for him. Then I have another child sitting in another spot. He's gonna be the Pentagon. Let's see, I just used blue. I'm gonna go with this red orange. I'm using crayons to trace because I like that usually the wax doesn't leave an edge around what I'm tracing. So that's why I chose crayons today. But since we're working at home, create with what you have. Now, and then usually on top of this, there's a lot of mess. So I'm gonna put you know what I forgot? I forgot me. 
Let's see, haven't done the square yet. I'm usually somewhere in the middle between the two of them. And I'm gonna be green. But you know, sometimes there feels like there is more than one of me. So I'm gonna go ahead and give my a second square next to my other son. So there, that's what we have so far. My two boys and two of me trying to juggle homeschool. But this table looks very clean compared to how my table normally looks while we're trying to work. So I'm gonna start using a circle shape. And instead of the large circle one, I think I'm gonna switch it out to a small circle. And I'm gonna start making lots of circles to represent all the papers. Sometimes there's tablets and computers on here for any digital learning that we have to do. And I'm gonna make it all different colors and I want it to overlap. Because I want to show that we are connected by all of this stuff that's hanging out on our table every day. Three, I feel like I need more. I feel like there's just always more and more and more to learn and to work on. I think I'll end up with one more. Yeah, I don't have a yellow. I'll put yellow by me over here. There we go. So now this is what my homeschool classroom is starting to look like. My two boys, two of me if I could double myself, and then lots of circles to represent all of the school and all of the knowledge that we're learning at this time at home. Now I do wanna add some type of background, and to make these guys stand out, I am going to start tracing just the edge of my rectangle. I want to balance this out by creating a pattern because I want these shapes overlapping in the overlapping in the middle of my page to stand on the front. Now I realize everyone at home may have different art supplies. If you like, watercolor it, paint it, fill it with lots of bright colors to show how excited you are to be learning with your family or enjoying the time at home. I didn't bring out paints, so I'm gonna use my crayons and create a line pattern all around my homeschool table. And I'm actually gonna try and make them all end near the center because I want these lines to move to a focal point, a middle point at my paper where we homeschool. I actually am gonna have my next video also focus on Raphael's School of Athens because it's a great painting to talk about perspective. And I really wanna cover perspective some with my older students. So I'm gonna move my way around my paper. Now if you have a ruler, rulers work great too. I've got this long straight edge of my rectangle and I'm gonna rotate it around. Almost like a radial pattern that we talked about when we made our Van Gogh flowers is what I'm going for here. And you know, I think I'm even gonna follow kind of the order of the rainbow. So we'll do orange and then yellow. Working my way around the picture. I want all these bright colors to represent the creativity that I feel like is going on in my house at this time. Yellow, everyone knows then green is next. I'm gonna throw some green after my yellow. Now, they don't all have to be evenly spaced. You can make sometimes your green really close to the yellow or very far away. Go with how creativity is moving you to add a background design. Next will come blue. Purple. 
really we would have indigo and violet. But we'll talk about indigo on another day. Indigo is my favorite tertiary or intermediate color. The only one that's actually included in the rainbow prism. Then our last color to swing it back around, red. We started with orange, so that means we have to end it with red. There we have it where I'm going to stop today at my beautiful homeschool school of Athens. I hope you've enjoyed using and tracing geometric shapes. Remember the shapes that have rules to create a really cool geometric design that represents your family during this homeschooling time. Please share with hashtag mini Monet's art or email it to me at mini Monet's at gmail.com. I look forward to seeing you again soon when we talk about perspective in the School of Athens painting by Raphael.